give your cats a owl. And if it smells like chicken, you're holding it wrong. G'day. Today I'm going to have a quick look at fixing, doing a mod to my hotbed on my 3D printer, which should hopefully help out my hotbed stay hot and help out this ATX power supply with maintaining its 12 volts on the 12 volt output. Now what's been going on here, I try and do a print like this, the print's broken at the moment so I'm fixing stuff while it's on my parts, but um, yeah, the, I'm printing away and the bed gets cold and the part comes unstuck and your print's over, you know, like that's only a quick print, but if it happened 30 hours into a 40 hour print you'd be pretty annoyed. And what's been going on, um, these ATX power supplies so you can see I've got all these light globes down here when I turn it on. And they're, hooked, they're 12 volt light globes hooked up across the 5 volt rail because these power supplies are designed to put out 45 amps on the 5 volt rail to run the CPU in your computer. And they also put out a lot on the 3.3 um, volt rail, 223 amps. So it's mainly the 5 volt rail you want to dummy load. That's what your CPU runs on. And it's usually drawing like 20 or 30 amps so you turn your computer on. Um, so that's why I've got all these loads down here. I've got a big fat one ohm resistor. That's actually on the three volt rail, just in case. Um, and I'm sitting here thinking the hot bed's getting cold because it's drawing too much current because it's only running on 11 volts when everything's powered up and the hot end's running and the motors are all running and the little fuse here, it gets too hot and it triggers and then the hot bed gets cold and then the print fails and just drum and drum and drum. So I'm thinking, all this stuff's making heat and I want more heat over here and I need to be making more heat to get this to work better so let's see if we can do something about fixing all of that at once so we want to make a dummy load that heats our bed and dummy loads our ATX power supply such as that one um, on the 5 volt rail so that we can chill two thirds of one stone with the 3D printer now, we've got a few problems here we need to consider. Now, it'd be easy just to whack a heap of resistor wire. That's from a toaster. We've got some hairdryer element here. If you have fuse wire around, that is also resistor wire. What all these things have in common is that they have a consistent resistance over a given length. So, right here, I've taken the measuring device and I've marked out 100 millimetres, 10 centimetres, and I set my multimeter to the ohms range, and I carefully measure. And I actually got a reading, the lowest reading I got was around 1 ohm, 1.2 ohms, there we go, and that's off camera. So, okay. Anyway, you get the idea. We've got about an ohm per 100 millimetres, and it is actually important with this resistor, this is our used toaster, if it's being used it'll be covered in oxide and stuff, you won't get a good connection with your probes as you just saw there, you do have to sand a couple of patches where you want to take a reading, then you'll get better numbers um, that are more consistent and stable and it's not jumping around every time you move the meter. Um, so I can straight away start doing some calculations there, once I know the ohmage per um, centimetre or meter or whatever unit, inch, whatever unit you want to use, you can work out basically how long you need to go over 5 volts, you just divide your voltage by your ohmage, it'll tell you how much current's going across it, you take that current, you multiply it by the voltage, and that tells you how much wattage of heat's being dissipated. But then you've got to convert that to the degrees, and that's a big problem, because what happens? If we heat this up too much, like say I get a bunch of these 10 watt 1 ohm resistors, that you should test, always test these guys, because they don't actually test to what they're labelled for. Look at that, that's a 1 ohm resistor, and it actually tests 1.2 ohms. So anyway, if we put a heap of these under there at 5 volts, it's going to work out too hot. Um, because I might want to print with PLA. And you only want your heated bed heated up to about 50 or 60 degrees for that. So I want a maximum heat coming off this heater of 50 degrees Celsius. So that's where my other multimeter with the K-probe thermocouple comes in. Now you don't have to use something so fancy. Any thermometer will do. But what I'm doing is I'm going to go and use my my fancy old power supply here because I have one. If you don't have one you can use your multimeter on the amps range, put it in series with your ATX on the 5 volt range so you can see how much current you're drawing because you'll want to know that later and just start doing some experiments. Uh, I should have got that prepared earlier. 
you grab your clip leads and you run them off your power supply thingy. Alright, you make sure your power supply is set to 5 volts. Alright, and where's another clip lead? There's another clip lead. And all I'm going to do is take these clip leads and start attaching them at different points along this resistor wire so that here it goes all the way up and comes back. I've already tested this before I happen to know that just about here is about the right spot. You can now see that I'm drawing just under an amp. So if that's what you want to use your multimeter if you don't have a power supply And we can grab our K probe. That's had enough time to reach whatever heat it's going to reach. Watch out for plastic bits that might melt if you get too hot. And we can try and take a reading here. Be careful not to burn or zap yourself. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. Where's my backlight going? Oh, it doesn't look like we've got a backlight on this meter anymore. That's sitting at about 39 degrees C, so we could go a tiny bit warmer. So I'll move this up a bit. And I'll keep playing around with this until I do find the right temperature. I'm really aiming for about 50 degrees C here. And if I put, I can put as much of these as I like under there that get to 50 degrees C and my heat bed will never get over 50 degrees C. So I don't need to worry about PWMing this because it's a dummy load and if I PWM it it's going to play havoc with the voltages everywhere else. This has to be on all the time whenever the printer's working. So it can't be too hot, but we do want to dissipate as much current as possible. That's why I've gone for the toaster wire. It's the thickest out of all the resistor wires I have. So it'll actually generate the least amount of heat for the most amount of current being thicker. Uh, it's just a better conductor. It'll have the least amount of ohms per meter is what you're looking for here. Um, so yeah, once you've found your correct value, then you can measure it up carefully and cut up a bunch of lengths that long. And we can move on to the next step. Okay, quick little note before we move on to the next step. Um, I've just left this running for a few minutes and come back and I remembered a vital thing. Look at that current, it's gone up. Thermal runaway. As things, resistors get hotter, their resistance can change and we can start pulling more current. So that was only getting to 43 degrees when I left it. Now we're getting over the temperature I wanted. So that might be a slight problem. I'm going to have to shorten the length. I was going to use a little bit to account for that. But um, let's do an experiment. Let's see how it goes. So here I've cut my first piece of resistor wire. This is all I've cut so far. And technically you wouldn't even need to cut it. You could just measure the length and do some calculations. I've just come back to my heat bed. And what I'm looking at is just how neatly it's going to run around on the heat bed. Like in this case it's really nice for an all the way up and all the way back. It doesn't hit that square so I can do that either way. Um, I'll probably be inclined to go in the opposite direction to the heating element lines that are already in that heat bed. So I'll be going this way and I'll have the all the connections up the back. That'll keep things nice and clean. But I'm just making sure that works out because if it went, say, all the way up and halfway back, that could give you some headaches soldering the wires up underneath. We're going to need this heat distribution to be as even as possible across this whole bed. So plan that out in advance. Okay, so now I've cut myself six pieces of wire I got out of that toaster element. They're all the same length, and we need to make some electrical connections so we can get them onto our ATX power supply. Now, I cut up a bunch of little bits of wire with its stripped ends ready, all ready to solder on, and then I hit a bit of a hitch. This nichrome wire doesn't solder. I've tried every flux I have. Nothing sticks. So, here's the solution for you. You take your bit of nichrome wire and right near the end, because remember we've got to keep these all pretty close to the same length, we make a little bend. Alright, so if the camera is going to focus, we should be able to see a nice little U shaped bend. It's a pretty open, little hook on the end of that wire. And then going to take our wire that we want to connect and we're going to hook it in the bend like so. And grab our pliers, give it a little squish. Bend that side down that way, and then take this tail and fold it over a couple of times. Alright, that's now a really strong connection, and we can clamp it up a bit more with the pliers. It's not the neatest connection in the world, but that is really strong. That wire is going to break 
the silver stuff in the, ins the insulated wire. I'm going to snap those strands off before that's going to come undone. I'm pulling on that really firmly. Um, so now we just need look out the sharp bits. I just stab myself. I'll squish that down a bit better. There we go. Now that's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt if I've got all these messy connections like that. If the camera wants to focus. So what I've got for a solution there is where did it go? Some of this stuff. Heat shrink. I grab my little snippers and I chop off a short piece. And I'll get my hot air gun fired up. And it wants to be asleep. I'll just chuck that there for a sec. Make sure it's not blowing at anything, that it's going to melt. And I'm going to put my heat shrink on here. Now you don't have to use a hot air gun like me. You can use a cigarette lighter, a blowtorch, or anything that's hot. This heat shrink only needs to be heated a bit over 100 degrees. And you'll see what happens. If I can do it on the screen, that'd be helpful, wouldn't it? There we go. Shrinks up all beautiful. Because we're not getting this heating element super hot, that'll be fine. So there we go, we've got a nice solid connection, I can solder that end. We shouldn't have too many melting issues because we're not getting hot enough. And so I'm just going to go over all my six bits of wire and stick one colour on one end and a different colour on the other end. Twelve little bits of join in total, and I'll be back. Okay, so I've, so I've heat shrinked all these wires onto the ends, I've got black ones on the other ends. And I'm ready to do some soldering. Now, a nice little trick when you're tinning wires and stuff to bendy thin things that don't hold down well, is to stick your soldering iron in a vise. It makes things a lot easier. And when tinning wires, the right flux helps a lot. Your, your typical flux core solder, most of your electronic solder actually has flux right down inside the wire. The camera's not going to focus. Um, but it doesn't hurt to add a bit extra. This stuff is really runny, it's really cheap, it'll last you for years. You know, it used to have a brush on it, but that fell off because it wasn't glued real well because it was really cheap. So I'm just going to get the wire I want to tin, give it a quick dip. Don't need too much, you only need a really little bit. Uh, chuck the solder on there to pre-tin my, get a bit on the end of my soldering iron. There we go, don't breathe that smoke, it's really bad for you, it'll give you cancer. Ow! Oh, if it smells like chicken, you're holding it wrong. Alright, now because we've got that flux on there, that solder should take quite nicely. There we go. Alright, so that's the easy way to tin a wire. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to do that with all of these. Chucking in the flux. Drip off the excess. Don't hold the hot part of the soldering iron, no matter how much you want to rest your hand there. And you know, the heat's gone through your bit of wire that you're trying to solder when you can melt the solder on the other side. And liquid solder does help with the thermal contact and does help with the heat transfer. There's a big cluster of wire, so it's soaking up the heat. I might just bump my soldering iron up a little bit. I was running at 380, we're now at 396 Celsius, that is. There we go, that's better. Alright, now those wires stuck real good. Alright, so I'm going to go and do the rest of that so you guys don't have to watch the boring bits and we'll be back at the next step. Okay, so I'm halfway there. I've got half my wire, my chrome wire tape down, but I've been having a few problems. I was originally going to tape the wire directly to the bottom of the heat bed, but I had some thermal runaway issues that we brushed across before and also I didn't get those wires cut as evenly to length as what I was hoping for so some of them have a slightly different temperature, I'll get that K-probe on there this one's only 75 
This next one, the third one, is going to be about 85. So I've got five to ten degrees of temperature variation across each line. Now that might not be a big deal the way I've tried to do it, sticking everything down to the under um, base here because I've got my screws and my springs and stuff and there's a bit of an air gap there so that heat's going to rise up and airflow from the fan and everything. It's probably going to keep me under the 60 degrees. I want to keep this part of the heater down too so that the heat bed can PWM itself and control its temperature more precisely at the range it wants to be in. But I've got that heated up, hooked up now as you see it's hot and I have my 12 volt rail hooked up to this meter here and now before when I ran my extruder heater and my heat bed heater at the same time, I was dropping down to 11.07 volts. Now I've just turned my extruder heater on. You can see there's hardly any change there. And the big one, let's turn the bed on. And we'll wait for a sec for the power supply to hit the load. And there we go. That is a significant improvement and I've only got half of it down. So this is going to work, but it does need some refinement. Uh, this capped on tape does not stick to the wood, it sticks to the heat bed okay, plastic surfaces, but it doesn't stick to porous surfaces that have stuff that peel off. Um, what's going on there? Oh yes, my thermosistor is not taking readings. So trying to face or the printer one or the other just killed the heating process because I wasn't seeing a thermal measurement. But anyway, I think we've got a good idea of what's going on here. I can run this extra heat down here, it's a dummy load, I'll hopefully be able to get rid of some of those lights over there some of that extra heat wastage where I don't want it because those lights are really serving no purpose um, yeah I'm probably going to look at to keep that wire stiff maybe I could use the corrugations in some cardboard and maybe feed it through this cardboard's probably a bit fine it would be really hard to get it through there but we're going to need some way to keep these nichrome wires fairly stiff and straight and evenly spaced and I'm probably going to have to adjust my gauge a little bit because this gauge of wires not really working out that great with the bed but you should have enough information here to try around with this yourself it is an experiment I wanted to try it does appear that it's been quite successful um, I'll do an update when I get it working properly and actually have a print happening thanks for watching okay I've had some done a bit more work had a bit a few experiments had some setbacks had some wins and I think I've just about got this all sorted so first fail of the day I didn't cut my wire evenly enough and I get different temperatures on all of them and they're all hotter than I want. This is one of the coolest ones on this middle one here. Um, it's running at 72 degrees, it's like 20 degrees hotter than I wanted. I'm not stopping at this point because I'm using ABS filament up here and it's um, I can print with my bed hotter but it might give me issues with um, PLA. So instead of sticking these wires like this, it comes up under the tape and then folds back. I was going to do that on the bottom of the heated bed back here but it's too hot and it would give me issues printing with PLA so I didn't, I tried putting it on here so that the heat would have to rise up and there'd be some airflow involved and drop the temperature, that's, uh, the effective temperature that's getting applied to the bed would be lower um, but it would still preheat my bed for me and still allow the ramp support to PWM control it um, and it should hopefully work well except capped on tape does not stick to wood this is just going to be a nightmare situation if I try and do it like that so I needed something stiff and rigid to hold my and my wire lengths weren't really working out very well for the bed size either. So I needed something stiff and rigid to secure my toaster wire with. So I wrapped it like a maypole around a bamboo skewer. You know, these are the typical kitchen skewers that you would put meat and veggies on and then grill them. Um, well, I often use them for cleaning things and stuff like that as well and construction around the lab. They're handy buggers, you should buy some. Um, Bamboo's really good with heat, and it's a really good heat insulator, so that should work fine. We're not getting over 100 degrees C. These guys are designed for cooking. It'll take two or 300 degrees Celsius before they start to burn, and even then, it's, they're surprisingly tough things. Um, so that should work fine. It's stiff, it's rigid, I can handle it and move it around. I've just disconnected all my wires. Um, and you can see there, that voltage dropped on the 12 volt rail because I disconnected that. So let's get back to why we're doing this. Let's have a bit of a look. All right, I'm gonna leave that disconnected on one side. So the bamboo ones are now not connected. These ones are still connected and heating. I am now going to turn on my heated bed. And we're gonna see what the problem was. All right, just turn the heated bed on. There's a slight delay. And look at that, we've dropped to 11.46 volts on the 12 volt rail. Now there's 
a bunch of current 10 amps or so going through that heated bed back here. Now watch what happens when I reapply half of my dummy load. And bear in mind before I did this, that voltage was reading 11.07. So I've already got a significant improvement just for having 3 amps of extra dummy load. I'm now going to add another 3 amps of extra dummy load. And look at that, the voltage picked up. Oh, now it fell out again. My connection's really bad. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm trying to stuff a wire down. Oh. And I just shorted out my power supply. But that's right, it's got a reset mode. I'll just turn it off. And we're back. Uh, I'll be a bit more careful this time. Let's um, straighten up into those wires. You guys can't see them. Um, and now you can't see the multimeter. Anyway, let's jam that in there and hopefully not hit the 12 volt rail with the 5 volt rail that's connected to 5 volts at the other end so I didn't like it when I stuffed it in one of the strands got across to the wrong voltage rail that's why my power supply switched off there we go back in there 11.62 and my bed is heating that is a huge improvement to what I had before now what's happening the reason that's an improvement is because this little guy down here, that's my thermal fuse. You've probably got a heap of wind noise then. Um, that thermal fuse gets too hot. Now, if the voltage is too low across the system, the effective resistance of this thing, this guy gets higher. There's more voltage dropped across that resistor than any given current that's th consistent throughout the circuit, and therefore we're dissipating more heat there than we, what we want to, and the thermal fuse triggers when it shouldn't, and then my heat bed goes cold, and then my prints fail. Um, by upping that voltage, I actually reduce the effective resistance of that fuse. I don't change its ownage, but by putting more volts across it, I'm dissipating less current because the voltage drop is lower. I know it seems weird, but it makes sense if you play with ohms low enough. Um, so yeah, it's not perfect. I was getting volt voltage drop. This was dropping down to nearly 10 volts when I turned my heated nozzle on. Turn my extruded nozzle on as well with the heater. There we go. That is still a huge improvement. I can now run both the heated bed and the heated nozzle at the same time and my fuse is not tripping. Because everyone hates it when the fuses are tripping. Okay, so let's I'll tidy all this up and we'll come back and have a look at the finished product. Okay, I'm nearly all done. I've got my heating elements, bamboo and toaster wire heating elements tucked in there. They're all a bit loose. Probably can't print with it like that because something's bound to move around and short out or get too hot in one spot or do something wrong but it's been on for a while I've heated the bed up I've let it cool down again that's my temperature 42 degrees Celsius 41 it's flickering back and forth between the two there's the temperature reading point there right in the middle of the bed I have had a bit of a feel around with the back of my hand there are some slightly patchy places but those elements aren't fixed evenly or accurately or anything and I still have an extra heating element so I can fix that That's and I don't think it's going to be a big deal because we're still way under print temperatures the, the, the other element is the one that's printed into the PCB on the top side here that's still going to get heated up so any variation, little variations, not going to be a problem that's just a preheater to dummy load that power supply this is always going to be at that temperature whenever this print is turned on now and that is just so perfect so, uh, one last test to do is to fire up the hot end and the heat bed and see what happens to the voltage on my 12 volt rail. And you will notice it's up a bit from what it was before. So I'm going to turn them on one at a time and I'll call them out as I do them. So heat on now and I'll take a moment. There we go. We can see that pulling that voltage down. That's the hot end heating up and the bed is going to go on now. And we're waiting for the reaction. It should drop some power. There we go. Look at that. It's not dropping all the way down to 11.05. It's still under 12. So that extra element here is definitely going to help improve that. And I'm still stuck with all those light lobes over there until I get maybe a head high beam or something and chuck that over there. That'll fix the rest of it. The heat bed's heating. It's heating faster and more easily. The voltage isn't dropping. It's not getting so hot. I've also redirected my fan there to blow on it a bit, so hopefully no more failed prints. I should be able to print with my print fan back here on. And I've calibrated this all in and my new parts here. 
So I'm all ready to do some prints and hopefully it goes well and I might be able to chuck on a little scene on the end or a couple of screenshots, photos or something. This video is probably getting too long. Um, so I'd call this one a win. If you need a dummy low for your ATX and you have issues with the bed not being hot enough or wanting a preheater for your bed, this is the mod for you. Thanks for watching. Oh, that worked great. I still haven't tied any of this stuff in. Yep. Got two prints out, as you can see there. First time printing that shape. First time in blue. First time with 0.4 nozzle for both of these. Everything went great. Um, this bamboo skewer toaster element heat bed mod is a winner. This one's staying for good. Thanks for watching.